Art and history are tightly linked, one always heavily, heavily influencing the other. In no case is this more true than in El Salvador. The Salvadoran Civil War, going on for 11 years from 1979 to 1992, was fought between the US-backed Salvadoran government and guerrilla forces, most of which were living in the mountains. The guerrilla forces and the Farabundo Marti National Liberation Front, or FMLN, fought against economic inequalities. They fought for land reform, redistribution of wealth, and end to government repression. Poverty has been a major problem in El Salvador for as long as anyone can remember, far beyond the start of the Civil War in 1979. Paolo Martin, member of the Radio Venceramos Film Collective, summarized the historical scope of the issue by saying, It's been this way since the last century. This is the same social conflict and the same war we've been fighting for about 100 years. That's why the muchachos, referring to the FMLN, are in the mountains. The government responds with merciless violence, massacres of towns constantly pursuing and attacking guerrilla groups in the mountains. The Salvadoran Civil War was a prolonged period of chaos for those involved. As Martin points out in an interview, experiences of the people of El Salvador were extremely varied. There were the guerrillas in the mountains, the government's military all about, civilians in both government-controlled or guerrilla-controlled territory, as well as those who lived in the heavily North American-influenced cities. The cinematic history of Central America was born from the combined struggles of the Sandista Revolution and Salvadoran Civil War, both starting in 1979. Much of the Salvadoran films that came about at this time were documentaries, working to objectively document the Civil War. Two Faces, a 1981 Salvadoran documentary. This film, directed by Guillermo Escalón and Manuel Sorto, attempts to summarize and objectively document all perspectives of the Salvadoran Civil War. The first efforts were aimed at documenting a totally new reality, one which even those of us participating in it had trouble believing was a truly stable national reality. We had to show this to the real world. Not only was the film's goal to create a message, but also to spread that message, to unite the isolated groups of people being affected in various ways of the Civil War. We had to break this isolation, he said, because we needed political and economic support. For that same reason, we have always defined our audience as the general public. We try to make films which can carry our message to the people of San Salvador, as well as people in the US or Europe. Mariah's Story, a 1990 documentary, following one of the leaders of the FMLN guerrillas during the Civil War, Maria Serrano accomplishes something different. Where Two Faces try to tries to tell multiple stories in an attempt to show the Salvadoran Civil War in its entirety, Mariah's story is much more contained, sympathizing heavily with Mariah and the guerrillas movement. The guerrillas are not merciless, unorganized, or as vicious as the media portrays them, as was basically the message of the film. In fact, they are incredibly noble. The poor, always forgotten, and all the possibilities limited. Some people with absolutely nothing. So the inequality and poverty is what made me decide to lead this life, said Serrano. Seeing their violent efforts as a necessary evil to an ultimate better future for everyone. A future of education and equality. The documentary also included brief snippets of American news channels, White House press conferences, and sought to shape the Salvadoran guerrillas as evil, merciless, unorganized, and incredibly violent. The White House was obviously biased in this stance, being the primary backer of the Salvadoran government for the economic benefits, consisting of coffee and indigo. This is a major struggle for El Salvador in general, learning to maintain a distance from U.S. and other foreign influences. Paolo Martin states about Salvadoran cinema, Our task is to project our own image, I think. This is the principal contribution of a national cinema of an authentic cinema in a third world country which has never had the infrastructure or the space to create a proper voice, a proper image. A nation's cinematic history is a major part of its identity, something, if done properly, can result in a unified people. I've been Joshua Stein. Good night, folks.